Chairman, I am very pleased to be here today uh, discussing this very important topic of religious freedom. Uh, my great-great-grandmother, in fact, my mom told me this as a child, says, why did she come to America? They left Scandinavia for economic freedom, but also for religious freedom. And that is why our family came to the United States years ago. Um, and it was, to, it was the government interference in the state of, in the church affairs, the whole free church movement. So grateful to be discussing religious freedom here today. I know as I travel around Montana, you talk about the Second Amendment and, and guns, you know, the phones light up. It's an important issue for us back home. But when you ask high school students, what's the First Amendment about? You usually hear about freedom of speech and freedom of the press, but they forget about the very first part, which you all know, the distinguished panel, is freedom of religion. And I'm, I'm grateful for that for our country. And so in light of that, uh, Mr. Perkins, uh, thank you for being here and for your testimony. In your view, has the current administration shown moral clarity on issues of religious freedom? Thank you, Senator. Uh I do believe, now I, I don't, obviously don't know everything that's going on, but the fact that for 36 months the ambassador's spot remained vacant sent a message that we did not put a priority as administration, as a country, on religious freedom. I'm grateful that the, the rabbi is now there because I agree. I think he's doing a good job and look forward to working with him in that post. But there's so much more that can be done. And this is not a one-size-fits-all approach to this religious liberty and freedom threat. The Middle East is one aspect. Uh, you look at what's happening in, in North Korea. China's been mentioned. We haven't mentioned India. After their elections, religious freedom has, has slipped in that country. Uh, we need to be watching very closely what's happening, not just with Christians, uh, but all religious minorities there in, in that country. Under the International Religious Freedom Act, this is to be a priority in our foreign policy. Our uh, training for our foreign service officers is to be a, a, a priority. Uh, diplomats uh, are to, or requires the diplomats to meet with NGOs to promote religious freedom. Now, you've probably had more interaction with ambassadors than I have, but I have met with foreign ambassadors. In my conversations, this has never been a topic that has been brought up to them as a priority in our foreign policy. In fact, it's been contrary. So uh, to answer your question, Senator, I would say no. They have not spoken with clarity. It has not been a priority that has been put forth by this, con by this country, this administration. And as a result, we see record levels of religious persecution. And according to the experts that track this, it it's not about to crest, it's continuing to rise in the, f in the foreseeable future does not look good. Thanks, Mr. Perkins. Question for the bishop, and um, I say this in the context of having spent six years living in China back in the 90s. Uh, I was an expat with a Fortune 20 company there, launching operations uh, to, to uh, sell products into a Chinese market. Um, in light of the Catholic Church's difficulties with the Chinese government regarding the appointment of bishops and freedom of worship, has the United States government played a positive role for the church and pressed the Chinese government to allow the Vatican to appoint its own bishops? I, I'm not a, a, an expert in diplomacy. I'm uh, a pastor. Um, but um, the, the, the fact that, as, as I mentioned earlier, that, that we won't allow the, the Vatican to, to take a, le a lead in this, and if anything, we want to we want to open up some space. Yes, are, are, but, are you getting help from the U.S. government? Um, I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, just as as a good physician, not, not sure would uh, would certainly not be a yes. That that's it's not a yes. Okay. Um, the uh, the as as a good physician, first you you do no harm, right. and so. Uh, we want to be sure that we don't do harm in, in opening up some space for dialogue. Yeah, and I understand it's a sensitive topic, having right. lived there for six years, but I'm hoping we'll do all we can uh, in terms of government here to help the cause there of the freedom for the Catholic it. Church. You bet. Um, Mr. Perkins, we've uh, talked a lot about religious freedom abroad today, but as Matthew 7, 5 tells us, uh, we want to be careful that uh, we're not looking at the speck in our brother's eye when we have a log sticking out of our own. Um, is the U.S. in a position today to be talking about religious liberty overseas when we clearly have a lot of work to do in our own country? I think that's an excellent question, Senator. And I think 
the lack of priority on religious freedom that we have placed here domestically in our policies does send a message internationally. I think there's a correlation between the growing intolerance of religious freedom, not the freedom of worship, but we had that discussion a moment ago, but the growing intolerance toward religious freedom here at home, i.e. in the marketplace, is giving rise to persecution abroad. And the reason I say that is because when we no longer make it a priority here domestically, that sends a message to bad actors abroad that America no longer puts a high priority in religious freedom, so we don't have to worry about them acting against us or moving against us based on that. I mean, you look at uh, the, the case of the HHS mandate with the Hobby Lobby case, which had to go all the way to the Supreme Court to give that private-held business the right to exercise their religion under the Religious Freedom Act. So I, I think to your question, Senator, absolutely. We need to do a better job here at home. All right, thanks, Mr. Sekulow, you have a thought on that? Well, Senator, I, I want to be careful and, and put this into perspective. I, I don't think we can compare a situation in the United States which would be, I would classify as acts of religious discrimination that do exist. And the Hobby Lobby was, in my view, an example, as Tony shared the same thing. But that is not on the same level of religious persecution where people are being having their throats slit, being crucified or beheaded. So I think the question is, even when we get Supreme Court cases we disagree with the Supreme Court on, I would not trade the U.S. system for any system in the world. And I still think we have the ability, because of our the constitutional framework that we have, and that we do protect, at the end of the day, we protect religious freedom. It may take court action, but at least we have a court action you could take to do it. These countries don't have that. So I'm always careful to, to compare I don't want to conflate religious discrimination and religious persecution, but I think we, I don't ever want to be perceived that the United States of America does not have the moral clarity to move forward on this because my grandfather, like your family, came from Russia, was a fruit peddler in Brooklyn, New York, and his grandson, despite Supreme Court cases in between that we probably would have agreed with or not agreed with, but his grandson gets to appear before this distinguished committee and argue cases at the Supreme Court of the United States. I think we have the best system in the world even with its faults. Completely agree, and I'm out of time, and how can I top that? <laughs> Senator Bozeman.